important is this number? And what do you think is priced in? In order for the market to, to rally, does it have to come down more than those numbers we just showed on the screen? I, I believe so. I think, you know, we've we've heard so much of a hawkish Fed uh, that for people to really think that the Fed is going to finally pivot and maybe not have those, you know, additional two to three rate hikes in the rest of the year, we're going to have to see such a dramatic drop. Um, and specifically in the core, not coming from the energy prices. Uh, and so I think that that's, it's going to take a lot to really shift the market where they think, okay, we're done. We're going to be pausing for, you know, three months instead of just one or two months. So in terms of this decision, okay, we had a big rally in the first half of the year. Mm -hmm. Can the rally continue? Is, again, is this kind of already priced in? Is it going to be something else that carries the market forward or... Is it still so dependent on the Fed? And if July is priced in, does September come next? We're not peaking on inflation, not peaking on rates, et cetera. So, interestingly, I think we've shifted a little more into fundamentals just in, let's say, the past few months. Certainly, the Fed is the dominant factor. You can't ignore that. It, and obviously, you know, what, it massively affects the bond market, which of course affects, affects equities. And so as long as we have these rate hikes, that's gonna be just a, a big headwind. But we have seen where companies that are really focused on growth, um, and more recently, even just in the past two weeks where we've been a little more risk off, uh, we've seen companies that have very favorable fundamentals, good valuations. Those have been some of the outperformers in the recent couple of weeks. Do you feel like an earnings recession has been priced in well enough by investors at this point, particularly with the frothiness that we've seen in the first half? You know, I think, you know, in certain areas, uh, no, it hasn't. Uh, but then in other stocks, they've been out of favor. It has. I think overall, I think the broad market, yes. But don't get me wrong, I think there are a lot of stocks, uh, particularly information technology, uh, that haven't had it priced in, that are, are just have just only recently in the past two weeks started to underperform. They're not necessarily, they don't have to go down, but they could certainly trade sideways for quite a while and underperform the broader market. It wouldn't still be healthy. You know, in terms of flows that we've seen in the first half, it's interesting you're saying take a pause when it comes to the leadership of AI and, and big tech, but that the flows into Japan continue. Yes. So uh, we've just basically seen a longer pause in Japan. I think fundamentally and just from a valuation perspective, there's just a little less risk there. So uh, when, if you're looking outside of the U.S., um, Japan is one of my preferred areas um, over, let's say, Europe and within the developed world. Well, speaking of then looking at the rest of the world, one of the themes that Heidi and I have heard the last few days is looking at emerging markets that, uh, but you kind of have to see the U.S. peak and capital ready to leave the U.S. Are you ready to look at emerging markets or Japan isn't exactly emerging market? It's By definitely... no means. It is very much developed. And so that's why I would say like that I feel safe with Japan. Um, because it is a very, a very developed market. Uh, and so, uh, just, I think, yeah, we're still, if you also just look at small caps and mid caps, we haven't really seen the flows into those riskier assets. And so I think that's very much on par with emerging markets is that until we get more stability within your developed markets, U.S. and, and you know, Japan and Europe, uh, I think we're still going to see more hesitancy uh, and not see those valuations and those prices really go up. Are you wanting any exposure to China at all, or are you actively turning away from anything that's vulnerable as a China proxy like commodities? Uh, so I'm turning away for now. I think we still have, uh, again, a lot of risk out there. And you know, given the interest rates and the bond, and what you can get in the bond market these days, I, I just don't see the payoff uh, for investors right now.